from somewhere in Oxfordshire, ever so slightly lost, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, it's back, we play hot or not with the 2019 Pro Cycling Team Kit. Very much looking forward to that. We've also got crap tech that you don't want from the Consumer Electronics Show and my next instalment of Zero to Hero. <laughs> Hero. Ah, anyway, we also have an exclusive with Peter Sagan. Doing what? What? What's he doing? <clears throat> he's, uh, he's playing table football. Oh, This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Alexander Vinokurov can rap. First ever pro cycling rap, 2019. New season is coming soon. This is Astana Pro Team. Skrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
They've done an amazing job yeah. on Vera's jersey for this year, haven't they? And then finally, we have got the one that people have been waiting for and then talking about a lot over the last week. It is from the EF Education First team. Yeah. Why the pause? Oh, the, you, that team name used to be much longer. It keeps catching me out, Yeah, true it? that. Uh, anyway, we have got our grubby mix on their new jersey, or at oh, least yeah. I has. Although, unfortunately, it appears they've sent us one over that went through a hot wash with a big Byron. <laughs> I will not hear a bad word said about that jersey, Dan. I think that is super cool. All right, well, we'll super agree on cool. that. I think we're both saying that that's hot. Although it does seem to be, as I said, polarizing opinion across well, social media, amongst fans, and also here at GCN Towers. Ollie, for example, when he saw it, said it looked like a poor attempt at a tie-dye t-shirt. Some people just aren't ready for the return of tie-dye, Dan. Some people have never seen it before, I would imagine. But anyway, let's not go into a conversation about us being middle-aged again. One thing I do really hope about this kit is that EF, Education First, can really back up Rafa's fairly bold claims about disrupting professional cycling. It will take more than super cool jerseys, dodgy moustaches and ironic hats, of which there were plenty on show at the Tour Down Under, as photo were. shows. Yeah, I know what you mean though. It was a slight anticlimax, wasn't it, when they announced their alternative race calendar for 2019 last week, which only included four events, didn't it? The Dirty Kanza, fairly obvious one, the Leadville 100, the Taiwan Kaon Challenge, and also, your favourite, the Three Peaks Cyclocross, which was also fairly obvious. Although, let's hope they add some more in the not too distant future. I'm sure they will, I'm sure they will. One thing I am really hoping, I think would be super disruptive to professional cycling, is if they had a women's team as well, because in those events, the men and women will race shoulder to shoulder. That, and that would be super cool, imagine that. That is very true, yeah, Dirty Kansas, Cam yeah, all of them, they could race shoulder yeah. to shoulder, couldn't they? Uh, there are a few teams, obviously, that have got a men's and a women's team within the same structure. I'm thinking of Trek Sega Fair, for example, Team Sunweb and Mobistar. But you rarely see them together, do you? Although, to be fair to those teams, they did have their presentations all together and the team photos all together too. Well, yeah, and the race programme doesn't allow them to race together, does it? But it would be great if it did. CCC, there's another one. They do, yeah. There's a lot of them, actually, doesn't there, these days? That's great. Anyway, it's time for you to give your opinions to us. Do you agree or disagree with myself and so the fashion gurus? Probably not, I think would be the main uh, opinion in the comments below. But let us know which kit you think is the hottest of 2019. That's right. We're not leaving hot or not completely right now though, because last week, Dan took his top completely oh off yes. <laughs> yeah, to find out what his body fat percentage was. Yeah. And now, uh, do we know what the outcome was? Not hot, I wasn't apparently. <laughs> no, I mean the body fat percentage. Oh right, uh, well, watch the video and you'll find out. It's now Thursday the 10th of January, so I'm in week one of week 10 of my training. Uh, two bike sessions down. So I thought that before too many physiological changes take place, I'd get some more health baseline tests done. So I've come to the University of Bath, where Jonathan Robinson is kindly going to test my fat percentage and a few other small tests, which I haven't found out about yet. Go on inside. Pull. You may well remember Jonathan from some previous videos on G's and also more recently on GTN. Uh, Jonathan's going to be doing some baseline health testing on me today, which involves what exactly? So we're going to measure a variety of things um, that we would hope might change over a 10 week period. So we're going to look at body composition or body fat, um, height and weight. We'll also look at some really simple strength measures, upper body, and then ones that are more likely to change, sort of lower body measures, so leg strength and also jump height, which is really good for leg power. And then we might do blood pressure and also basic lung function type of tests. So a kind of baseline set of kind of data to Great. start off with. Well, let's get started then, see where I'm at. Okay. It's been seven years since I had my fat measured. Uh, I haven't put loads of weight on in that time, 2.4 kilos heavier, but I might well have lost a little bit of muscle I did have, so the composition could have changed quite significantly. I don't think too much on the arms and legs, we'll wait and see, but um, we'll see what the difference is on the stomach. What was my percentage last time you worked out? Six. So 6.15. Um, so the, the fat on the abdomen there has gone from 7.2 to... 23.5. 23.5. But that's millimetres, yeah. not, not percent. <laughs> yeah. 
I've done a bloody good job there on the old abdomen. Results are in. I was 6.1% in 2011 and I'm now... 11.9. 11.9%. Not too bad, that's quite a healthy percentage, isn't it? Yeah, so anything under 12 is fine in yeah. terms of general population. Um, man in the street is probably somewhere between 15 and 20%, so okay. 12 is still a pretty good score. <laughs> Next one's false vital capacity, so how much air you're breathing out. So from fully inhaled to fully exhaled, so kind of lung volume, essentially. And that's 7.15 litres, which is good, high score, and also 130% of what we predict. So pretty good. So basically, it's kind of like a bench press, so you sit there and you push away. Oh, okay. oh I thought it was going to be legs. We can do legs, we will do legs afterwards. Seven one average. One seven one average in one seventy seven. Not not a good score, just a better no, score. No, it's relatively. a good score. <laughs> it's a good score. Oof, I meant not the weight of the mat. <laughs> God, it's hard to then bend them when you land because you try and keep it them straight. So that's twenty five. Twenty six point eight. Oh, last we'll one. We'll give you that. Jonathan has just created a. A bar chart here which represents my fat percentages in millimetres now versus previously. No, not too bad actually on the most part until you get to this abdominal bit again which is still making me laugh a bit. Uh, anyway, we've got all of the baseline sort of health parameters now. What would you expect to change over the next 10 weeks and what would you expect to stay roughly where it is at the moment? I think that um, the skin folds and the body fat will probably see a little bit of change in that and probably around those higher scores, we'll see that drop down a little bit. Yeah. Um, probably won't see much change in your weight, you might see fraction, fractional changes, but quite often if you lose a bit of fat you might put on a bit more muscle and they kind of balance things yeah. out. Strength yeah. wise, um, we might see a bit on the legs, um, don't know how much we'd see on the arms if you're not going to do much work there, yeah. but there might be a little bit of carryover with you know, a little bit more physical activity generally, okay. and we might see a bit more explosive power in the, the jump test, depending yes. on what sort of training well, that you're so. undertaking, really. That was pretty poor, wasn't it? <laughs> was it 26.8 centimetres? Room for improvement there, for sure. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jonathan, for your Pleasure. time. And no hopefully problem. we'll come back in 10 weeks, see if anything has changed. Yeah. Cheers. OK. 10 weeks, you say, from the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm currently performing some complex mathematics. Lloydy, you sneaky bugger, you're getting fit for the GCN event in Mallorca, yeah. aren't you? Funny that, isn't it? I'm going to be flying for our first ever GCN <laughs> event. Uh, yeah, actually a reminder that we have got our first GCN event taking place this March, the 20th to the 24th, in Alcudia on the beautiful island of Mallorca. Yeah, what? four days of some of the most beautiful riding you can possibly imagine. We've got groups for all ability levels, and the final day is a KOM challenge of sorts on one of the famous climbs out there. Yeah, Looking forward to that. We'll wait to find out exactly what that entails. Uh, there'll also be entertainment on most evenings, and on the other evening there's going to be my pub quiz. Oh yeah, it? how's it going? Hopefully that'll be entertaining too. Well, I've got a couple of questions written, but I've mainly been concentrating on the drinks menu, and there's an extensive list of, well, it's like the who's who of beer on my menu, basically. <laughs> nice. With percentages that you wouldn't want to ride at. <laughs> Right, if you fancy joining us and uh, if you fancy the sound of Lloyd's beer menu, then uh, you can get a bit more info by clicking on the link in the description and heading over to our events website. Next up, it's time for our weekly GCN inspiration. Your chance to win one of three wiggle voucher amounts, £50 for third, £75 for second, and £100 for first place each week, depending on whatever you want over on the Wiggle Online shop. Better than poke in the eye, that, isn't it? It is. Right then, in third place, this one from Cycling Sam on Instagram, which I absolutely love the photo, and I also like the caption that goes with it. Exam's done, time to get back to some proper training. I remember that very sentiment, Dan. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, you know, makes me want to go ride my push bike. He's going to have to split it with the person that took the photo, though. Richard he is. Lindsay, isn't he, unfortunately? £25 each. Do you know what? I bet after he took that, he kept going back to Richard and saying, let me just check it. Nope, that's only going to get third place. <laughs> Let me just check it. Anyway, you've got third place, so well done to both of you. Let us know what you there spend your go. vouchers on. In second, it's Colm188, Sunrise on Dolly Mount Strand in Dublin. 
That's a cool shot, isn't it? Super cool shot. I mean, technically riding on beaches is pretty bad for your bike, so that bit's not very inspirational, well, it but- It does look very hard packed at that It point. does look hard packed. You can't even see how he's got there, look. No wheel tracks or anything. Okay, so I'm inspired by that particular beach as well, uh, but also, I mean, any bit of sunlight at the minute is great to perceive, <laughs> but that does look super cool, doesn't it? Yeah. I love it. Very um, well deserved second place, but- Yeah, can we have a drum roll, Si? Thank you very much. This is an amazing photo. It is, isn't, isn't it? it? I don't normally look forward to riding through tunnels, but if they were all like this one, I would. It comes in from Kenny in Italy on the old road just below Clavia, wherever that is. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a right. very aesthetically pleasing tunnel, isn't it? Like you say, probably horrible to ride through because all tunnels are up. But anyway, that is wicked and a well-deserved first place 100 pound wiggle voucher to you. Yeah, make sure you let us know what you spend your voucher on. Uh, a reminder of how to enter each week, there's an uploader link in the description just below, or you can use the hashtag GCN Inspiration over on Instagram. Yeah, all you have to do is give us an inspirational photo. Why it's inspiring? Well, you'll find out. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, I'm going to start with some more crap tech from the CES. Like wearable airbags from Helite. Uh, these are called Be Safe, without the E at the start, to make the name look a bit cooler, and are essentially inflatable life jackets, which, well, they inflate when they sense that you're about to have a crash. Yeah, not a terrible idea, you might think. Except, I don't know about you, but whenever I've crashed, then all the injuries have pretty much exclusively been to my appendages, you know, like so my hands and wrists and elbows and knees yeah. and... You did once break your neck though, didn't you? Yeah. Is that an appendage? It does stick out the top a bit, doesn't it? But it's fairly critical. Yeah, it is, it is quite a long yeah. neck, that is. Mm. Uh, also, you want a bit of protection around your bum these days, don't you? If this you... picture of Lucas Postelberger at the People's Choice oh! Material is earlier to go. Ouch. How sore does that look? That does. He needed a big airbag, didn't he, to cover that? <laughs> no, I'm still, look, Lucas, I didn't mean it like that, I promise. Just that it was a big cut yeah. on his... Yeah. Imagine the weight if you had ankle protectors. That's a good point, actually. They would be big. Uh, anyway, moving on. Some tech from the CES now that actually might be quite good. Check out this new e-bike, which was inspired by a design from Jean Prouvé from 1941. It's called Colleen, and it's uh, designed and made exclusively in France. Hmm? Certainly, potentially looks all right, doesn't it? Does, doesn't it? Uh, and then, also, something that could be pretty big, this from Nordic Track, who are a really big indoor training company. Uh, they developed an indoor bike, and in conjunction with the accompanying virtual reality software, basically make indoor cycling into a game. That's right, including one where you pretend to be an airship, which actually seems like quite a good idea. We all have those days, don't we, where we feel a little bit bloated, a little bit slow, and you could just kind of bimble around being an airship. Maybe it's because you've got a Helite B safe on. <laughs> good point. All right, from high tech to low tech yeah, now, you remember a few Handily months back now. That's it, yeah, people are wondering how much stuff we've got under there. Check these out. Yes, we had a Kickstarter uh, that we mentioned and uh, we've just been sent our new gloves. So there we go. Yeah, high five, Dan. Boom. Right, oh, hang on a minute. I've heard there might be some action over at the Peter Sagan table football. Is that definitely Sagan in that jersey? We're going to move on now to a little bit of race-related news, and it looks as though Team Sky's future could be looking a little bit better if reports in La Gazzetta dello Sport were anything to go by last week. Uh, they claim that the owners of Sky, the broadcasting company, Comcast, are set to pay 70% of the team's wage bill in both 2020 and 2021. Quite a considerable investment yeah. and particularly important because it will really help team owners try and find a new sponsor because instead of having someone who will need to invest about 30 million pounds a year, they'll only need to find nine million. Yeah. So, uh, so that'll make a big difference. And also Gazetta in that same article, they, uh, they agree with me, Dan. Garrett Thomas will ride the Giro d'Italia. <laughs> you did say that, didn't you? I did. But yeah. he hasn't said that. He said he's focusing on the tour. So it's yes. really interesting to see who's right about Geraint's race program. Like, is it still a sport and Sai or Geraint himself? Uh, we shall wait and find out in a month's time, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, also, something else we found out last week through the Cycling Weekly website was that at the start of this year, Ed Val Boysenhagen did a quite epic indoor training system, a marathon. Yeah, the stats. A cool six and a half hours indoors, uh, 212 kilometers, four and a half thousand calories burned. I mean, 
indoor training has come a long way in the entertainment stakes, hasn't it, in the last 10 years or so, but the thought of that still fills me with absolute yeah. dread. Likewise. I mean, he did do it on that Tax Magnum indoor trainer that's like a treadmill, but still, that's got to take its toll. What's the longest you've ever done on an indoor trainer? I confess, I did three hours once. I did exactly the same. I once did three hours. When I was 18, the only thing I had to look at was a shed door, and it was enough to put me off indoor training almost. For, I'm just getting over it now, in fact. I still yeah. have recurring nightmares. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what, thinking about indoor training, your coach uh, at Sufferfest, Neil Henderson, a man to be respected and also feared, because I've heard it said that he wanted 13 hours on an indoor trainer in order to qualify oh, for uh, a Sufferlandrian knighthood. I don't know what one of those is, but it sounds quite impressive, certainly wow. an initiation test. Do you think you're gonna qualify for a knighthood? On Sufferlandria, I'd very much. I'd be lucky to get a rosette if that's <laughs> how you have to get a knighthood. Well, you'd be lucky to get your 300 watts if your training is anything like what we caught you doing the other day at lunchtime. You rolling? Yeah. I've got a right sweat on now. I'm deep into the session. Point taken. I, I won't be cheating for my 10 week training program. No, well, you'll get found out in Mallorca. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what your longest indoor session has been in the comments down below and no sniggering. Yeah, I, I think I'll stick to my four one hour sessions per week. Well, that site. would be quite good going down. Before we get on to this week's hacks, forward slash bodges, a quick reminder of how you submit your hacks and bodges. Uh, there's the uploader just below this video in the description, or the hashtag is GCN Hack, which you can use on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we're starting off with a hack this oh, yes. week. Uh, you might remember in a few years ago that Drew Wilson of Cyclo Carbon made a fat bike road bike out of a trek, and it was quite the masterpiece, wasn't it? Anyway, he's been- It was been... a fat time trial bike, if I remember oh, it correctly. Was, it was a right. time we'll trial bike, yeah. picture of it uh, so that you can see it. Anyway, he's been back in his workshop, beavering away, and he's made a couple of very cool bikes here, hasn't he? Uh, this one was the Strider bike, the balance bike there at the front, was made out of an old Boardman frame that was cracked. And then what's he done with this fork, Si? He's made a kid's lauf suspension fork. I didn't, it took me quite a while, and I'll be honest, Dan telling me what it was, because that looks like a normal sized bike, but no, it's a kid's bike. How cool is that? I mean, the other kids are gonna be jealous of his kids, aren't they? Grade A happy wow. cyclocarbon, there we go. Uh, right, moving on, uh, from high tech to low tech now, uh, Bike More, uh, one of his bicycle hacks, it's to cover his disc rotors when he's cleaning his bike. Uh, with some sarin wrap there. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm less pernickety about my disc rotors when I'm cleaning my bike, but if, if you are worried about contaminating them, that's a great idea. Yeah. What well, do you do to your pads, though? Where do you put those to keep them safe? <laughs> I'm as lazy Question. as you are when it comes to covering rotor side, but they can get quite noisy, can't they, if they're contaminated by oil? That's the thing, yeah. Uh, right, next up, this from Paul Kujath. Uh, always wanted some proper deep section wheels, and he's got them for free there, just by nice. riding in the snow. Aero snow fairings, yeah. good stuff. Uh, Colm underscore D1 on Instagram has made his own uh, bike rack for quite a lot of bikes, I think. Yeah. For his team car, I like that, that's yeah. very cool. That's a very good job, because actually they're rare, aren't they, those team car bike Super racks? Super rare, yeah. They're like uh, hen's teeth, so making one your own way is probably the only solution if you want something similar to the pros. Uh, next up, slightly weird one here, from Gary on a bike. Uh, the trainer keeps jumping around when doing sprints, so I tried to keep it in place. This bungee works so far. Gary, that's a bodge. <laughs> if, if your trainer keeps jumping around, attaching it to a single piece of elastic is a bad Idea. Yeah. If you get really enthusiastic, it'll ping back and fling you out your French windows. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, Just Dan. to make sure it stays in place, maybe pull the bungee back a bit further <laughs> and attach it to something further away so there's a bit more tension on it then see what happens. Uh, bodge, I think we're gonna say to that. Uh, oh. Jeffrey has uploaded a load of photos to our uploader, and this is his garage space. Uh, so he's got limited space there, so he has made a very neat job of creating a work stand complete with lighting and lots of storage and plenty of other stuff there, and that is something that many people out there are going to be jealous of. Super cool, yeah, that uh, gets a big thumbs up from me. Yeah. Also known as a hat. Uh, right, and then next up, we've got this. Funky looking bit of kit. This is uh, Matthew's Merida Reacto. And he's got, well he's mounted his STIs in all the wrong places, but when you think about it, that should work. Yeah. He said he couldn't afford flat bars for his one bike conversion, so he made drop bars flat instead. 
I think that is um, hipster. I think hipster's not a cool word anymore, but you get what I mean. Do you think they'd work? Do you think they'd work as bar ends as well? Well, possibly. Yeah, you just couldn't break or change gear at that point. But you can't on bar ends anyway, so I can. Good point. As I'm just thinking now. Uh, we'll finish with my favourite though. This came in from Cape Town, and Sean was the person who uploaded it for us. I wonder why that's your favourite. <laughs> yeah, I love recycling bicycle equipment, and I used a crack roval rim to create a beer tap system, perfect for after every ride. Why limit yourself to after every ride? Dan has it all the time. I want one. Uh, if you've got any more cracked roval rims, please send one of those things over. Looks amazing. Caption competition now. Your opportunity to get your hands on a GCN water bottle. All you gotta do is put a caption on to a photo and then stick it in the comment section down below. Before we get started on this week, we've got results. We of have. course, this was last week's photo. <laughs> yeah, Miguel Angel Lopez there, lacking the central part to any bike, which is the frame set. Uh, and the winner is Greg Mid TN, who put caption, new definition of clincher. <laughs> which made you and I chuckle, plus 20, 21 others who liked it uh, in the comment section. So well done to you, Greg. Get in touch with us on Facebook with your address. We'll get that sent out to you. Uh, this week's photo comes from the traditional animal visiting at the Tour Down Under. Uh, this is of Astana rider, Yevgeny Gdic. Not sure how his wrapping is, uh, but I'm gonna get you started. Go on then, Whip some rap. Ain't nobody messing with my clique, 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 clique. Cleek, because he's got Cleek written on his T-shirt there, Si, in case you didn't get that. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't get the pop culture reference either. Is that a rap? It, it's a rap, yeah. Like a... It's Kanye West. Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't think he's very fashionable. I've been, I've been listening to the Ramones all yeah. week. I haven't had time for Kanye. Yeah. Alternatively, you could have had, bear with me. I like that one. Oh, I'm more up my street. <laughs> anyway, see what you do down in the comment section down below. I'm listening to Kanye West on the way home. <clears throat> before we get on to our favourite comments of the week, which in itself comes before we get on to what is coming up on the channel this week, should we just check back in with Peter? Yeah, that's. <laughs> Still going. That's an epic oh, football tournament, yeah, isn't longer it? Longer than a 90-minute soccer match, or football, for English people that get annoyed at me saying soccer. Uh, right, uh, one of my first favourite comments was this from Midtown Sky Port, uh, which is underneath last week's GCN show, about sacrificing speed for style, or vice versa. Uh, to be fair, if us roadies wanted to look cool, we'd be mountain bikers. There ain't nobody in this for style points. Fair point. Unless you're in EF Education First, that team. Yeah. To be fair, uh, Rob Hales was quite pleased, wasn't he, last week uh, for his shout-out? called out. a twonk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He was, not he? Love that. Absolute twonk. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Rob. Uh, certainly because we're still smarting. I'm slightly jealous. And getting smashed all year because of your skin suit. And... Anyway, never mind. A cycling enthusiast uh, said uh, under the lunch hour video, Emma could have done all five of those things and win a world championship and get back with 15 minutes to spare. Yeah. Yes, there was a reason why she wasn't invited on that particular video. Yes, and then underneath the top Neo pros, or new pros to look out for in 2019, uh, we had this from Steve Wiltshire. Dusenink? Yeah, Pat will love that. Should we listen to it? Let's listen time? to it one more yeah, time. Dusenak. I'm starting to think perhaps we shouldn't have told him that's how you pronounce it. Now. I know. But it's been great that. material for this week's show. Yeah, that was a it? bit so, mean. Yeah, sorry, it? Hank. <laughs> right, yeah. coming up on the channel this week. On Wednesday, we're going to show you how to commute in winter. And on Thursday, we've got three killer winter training sessions. It's quite a dry in the UK here at the moment. Right? Is, you isn't could it? go and do them outside. And then on Friday, as ever, it's Ask GC Anything with Hank and Chris. Speaking of Hank, on Saturday, we get a Meet the Presenters. That's right, you get to know who James Lowesley Williams really is. Is it James Lowesley Williams or James, James Lowesley uh, Williams? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, and then on Sunday, I'm particularly excited about this one, Dan, we've done a little bit of research. Is cycling in a city actually doing you harm? Is it killing you? Mm. There we go. That'll and then on Monday, one. yeah, we'll be back with the racing news show and Tuesday back in the set for the GCN show. <laughs> It's unbelievable, Sider. We've got to the point in our careers where we can make fun of other people's pronunciations. <laughs> I don't think we can, really, Dan. Well, we I suspect we there'll be some comments underneath. <laughs> now, before we get on to Extreme Corner, I think we should probably check back in with Peter Sagan yeah, to see whether or not... Now. Yeah, are we in extra time? <laughs> 
And he lost he in did, the end. didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Maybe he should stick to bunny hopping up staircases. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like he's accustomed to losing. It doesn't take that well, does he? No. Punching his teammate, or on opposing teams, as the case was for this particular mm. match. All right, we shall get on to Extreme Corner now, which is wheelie good size. Oh, it is, isn't it? Now, you might not think that a wheelie is traditionally that extreme, but if you do it for long enough, not only is it extreme, it's also a world record. Congratulations to Kurt Usburn, who has set his third world record. This time he's wheelied across America. That's right, all the way from Santa Monica in California, right over to Florida. He basically did a Forrest Gump, didn't he? He wheelied until he ran out of road. Obviously, Forrest Gump ran, whereas he did on his back wheel, but yeah. nevertheless, mighty impressive, isn't it? Is, I was about to say exactly the same term, but I'm glad I stopped myself in time. Uh, well done to you, Kurt. Uh, before we finish completely this week, uh, we've got a sale going on over on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, up to 50% off certain items, and there is also 10% off our Australia World Tour t-shirt. Uh, to celebrate the fact that the Tour Down Under is going on as we speak right now. That's right. Now, we uh, mentioned it earlier on, our lunchtime challenge that Emma would have smoked us all. Uh, if you haven't seen that one yet, then do make sure you check it out. The link is on screen now.